Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and I hope you had an excellent holiday. We got a little bit of a Christmas gift this year that uh, I didn't cover until Boxing Day because, well, I was celebrating Christmas. Hope you guys had a good holiday and the newest gift we have here is a new release of Raylib. Now the last release we had of Raylib was back in April 1st and no, it was not an April Fool's Day joke and yes, it's a very bad idea to do releases on April the 1st, but he, he seems to like holiday releases actually. So Raylib 3 was on April Fool's Day and then of course Raylib 3 Point five was on Christmas. So uh, since then, quite a bit has happened, including Raylib 1, an Epic Mega Grant. Now, if you don't know what Epic Mega Grants are, basically it's giant piles of cash that Epic Games hands out to, well, even competing game engines, actually, which is it's kind of nice to see. Uh, so great project, definitely one that I recommend. If you want to learn um, game programming and C at the same time, Raylib is probably my number one recommendation there. It's based off of some libraries that I'm a big fan of, including going way back in time, Borland BGI, and then uh, Microsoft's XNA. Both excellent, both very good for beginners. Uh, and Raylib, in a lot of ways, it's simplicity itself, and I do appreciate that. Uh, it is available at raylib.com, so if you want to go ahead and and check that out. I will, of course, have that linked down below. The cool thing about Raylib is, well, there's a lot of cool things. First off, there is a ton of platform support. So we got a couple more with the release of 3.5, but Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, uh, Raspberry Pi, various different uh, Linux installs out there, Android, so on. So there are a ton of platforms supported uh, by Raylib. And then on top of that, there are a ton of language bindings, something like 50 different languages out there uh, support Raylib. Uh, so, you know, everything from Ruby and Python to Go, uh, C Sharp, Rust, and so on. So if you are looking for a cross language framework, uh, it's hard to beat Raylib in this regard. It's sort of similar in some ways to SDL for the number of platforms that it is available on. And it's broken down into a number of different components or libraries. You only know, really need to, to link in the ones you want to use. Um, you see here, there's special effects. I forget what each one of these actually stands for, but it's all broken down into various different pieces. Uh, you only need to use the ones that you want to use. In terms of features, one of the really cool ones, this is one of the things that makes it very beginner friendly, is there are no external dependencies. In fact, you can actually download Raylib uh, in a zipped format with a Notepad++, a pre-configured C++ IDE, and you just start typing code. So like I said, it is a great option for people just starting out with C and C++, or for people just looking for a C framework. So here you can see the various different pieces of Raylib and how they slot together. So you've got the core um, that's got cameras and gestures in it. You got textures, text shapes, model loading, shaders, Raylib audio, and then that all kind of sits over top of OpenGL and OpenGL ES. And then there's also a Raylib math library. So again, if you want, you could pull out just the math library and use it on its own. If you need just an audio library, you can pull out our audio and use it on its own. So the modular, na modular nature of this is definitely a nice thing. And then you couple that on top with the fact that there are 50 different programming languages supported. And then we get into the examples and ooh, there are a lot of examples. So that's one of the reasons why I actually don't really do tutorials for Raylib. You don't need them. There are a ton of tutorials out there for Raylib. So if you want to do input, you can do input. You want to get into 3D, there are 3D examples, progress bars, GUI controls, uh, sprite and rendering, sprite sheets, you name it. There is probably an example for it. So I am uh, definitely impressed by the scope of Raylib's documentation. And then the other thing where Raylib really shines is in order to learn it, you just got to print this guy off. And really, in a lot of ways, this cheat sheet, this is all you really need to know. And it's kind of funny. This also throws back to the age of Borland, and the BGI, and uh, uh, MFC in the early days and so on. They used to all ship with these cheat sheets, which kind of were just a breakdown of all the various different functions were out there. And you can see generally from the... the, the uh, the comment beside it, if the thing itself didn't make sense, the comment is generally all you need to know. Uh, so couple this with a couple of examples that you can get up and running fast. So uh, I do really appreciate the simplicity of Raylib. Um, so if you are looking for, again, something simple, C, C++ library to start out, Raylib is a good choice. Now, Raylib is an open source project. It is under the Zlib license. Zlib is actually a pretty liberal license in what it allows you to do. I can never really remember what the difference between like Zlib and MIT and um, What's the other license that's in the uh, Apache license and so on? I kind of look at all of them as being equally liberating. There's small tweaks between them. By the way, if you ever really want to find out, you just kind of click on it and you can you can see the details here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, no liability and no warranty is the same thing with MIT. So there's going to be a small licensing difference there. But for the most part, Raylib allows you to use it in your projects pretty much however you wish to use it. Uh, you just can't. When it blows your computer up, you can't blame Ray. 
file. So that's how it stands. Uh, now what we're doing is looking at what is actually new in Raylib 3.5.8. Oh, and we have a number of different things here. So also since uh, the last release, once again, they did get an Epic Mega Grant. It's been nine months since the previous release. In that time, we had 650 commits, 30 new functions added, 90 functions uh, reviewed or redesigned, 30 new contributors. Uh, that's pretty awesome, 170 people contributing to Raylib now. And there are eight new examples, making the collection over 120 examples for uh, how to use Raylib. So the key new features of 3.5 is a new platform support. Raspberry Pi 4 native mode is there does not require the X level windowing layer um, now we're getting into a bunch of acronyms I do not know uh, through DRM subsystems and GBM API I'm not a Raspberry Pi guy so that kind of means nothing to me I do find it interesting that someone chose to use the acronym DRM uh, so on top of that, uh, there's also an unofficial homebrew version of Raylib available for both PS4 and PS Vita. And I actually believe the Vita version was already actually updated to support 3.50. So that's that's pretty quick. Um, we got new configurations option uh, using config.h. There's 150 flags and defines so you can have Raylib built to just the features that you want. You can keep it uh, really, really small if you so wish by tweaking it using config.h. Uh, there is automatic GIF recording. Uh, this isn't really new. There was automatic GIF recording before, but the difference is the old one sucked. The new one doesn't. So give it a shot. Uh, it's available via uh, msf underscore gif.h so you can record out your video uh, directly from memory. Uh, out to uh, a GIF file. So if you want to render your uh, screen capture as a GIF, you've got that option out there. Uh, render batch system added to RLGL. Uh, batching is nice because what it allows you to do is perform uh, fewer draw calls in the GPU, but generally results in some pretty good performance improvements. Um, there is now a uh, rendered batch support in Raylib. However, it's uh, not directly exposed to the end user. Or I should say that it's misleading. It doesn't have an end user optimized um, interface there. So if you want to use it, you're going to be uh, getting into the RLGL direct stuff. So you're, you're working at an abstraction layer lower than what most Raylib users have to work at. I'm assuming by his verbiage here that there will be a, a more high level exposed render batch support in the future. Uh, new frame buffer system now exposed to API for custom frame buffer attachments and QDQ maps. Uh, Render texture is a basic use case, uh, just allowing color and depth textures. New APL allows for the creation of advanced fame buffers uh, with multiple attachments like G buffers. Uh, gen texture functions have been redesigned to use this new API. Uh, there is now software rendering. Now, this is a throwback. Uh, basically, if you got no GPU or even no window manager, there is a um, an image support for you, so you can actually render out so uh, multi-format pixel data and ram i've uh, been completely redesigned to be faster especially for small resolution and retro gaming low-end embedded devices like microcontrollers with custom displays could benefit from this functionality i'll admit straight out uh, software rendering without a windowing system or gpu is definitely more one of those fringe cases but this is uh, a framework that runs on all kinds of hardware including some really stripped down hardware so that's what the use case there um and we've got file loading directly from memory, uh, Windows state management, uh, core module has been redesigned to support Windows state check and set up more easily, and also before after window initialization, and new GitHub action CI CD system. Uh, yeah, so that's more on the build side of things, probably not gonna interest a lot of you in that case. You can see here the binaries are all available. Uh, if you go ahead with the installer, so you can see how small uh, Raylib can actually be. I actually also showed in a video how you can use VCP Package Manager uh, on Windows to get up and running with it. So if you want to look at it that way, I'll, I'll link that in the linked article down below. Uh, you see here, uh, there is an installer there. It comes with the MingW compiler in that case and uh, Notepad++, but you can literally, you can download this package, run it, and then just start typing code. I think it's F5 to run your code. It's probably the simplest and easiest way to get up and running in C or C++. The library itself is technically C99 based, I believe it is. It's a C uh, framework, but the nice thing is C and C++ in this particular case are pretty much 100% compatible. So you can run this in your C++ uh, application of choice as well, but you can also run it in straight C if that is your thing. So that is Raylib 3.50. Uh, again, first release since April, uh, definitely one worth checking out. It's very simple and straightforward. There are, again, a ton of examples to get you up and going. Uh, there are a number of reference games you can see that, uh, that were created using Raylib so you can get an idea of what it's all about. And again, generally, all you need to know is what is in this cheat sheet. That's it. That's the documentation you require for the most part. Obviously, you need to know C or C++. 
Plus as well. And then if you need to know a little bit more, head on over to the wiki and you've got even more documentation, some details on getting various different build systems, other tools up and going, and for working with a couple of the tools that come with it. So that is Raylib 3.50. Congrats on the new release. And uh, once again, happy holidays, everyone. Talk to you later.